Hi, my name is Eric. Welcome back to my channel. Let's talk about Alec Benjamin. Today, I'm going to be listening to his music for the very first time. I've heard his name all over, but I've never actually gotten around to listening to his songs. So today, I'm going to look him up on YouTube and check out his three most popular videos. Before I dive in, let me know in the comments down below if I should listen to more of Alec Benjamin's music on my channel and what other artists you'd like to see me listen to for the first time. Check the description box for a link to a list of nonprofits you can donate to. Please subscribe to be here when I post new videos every week and hit the bell icon to be notified when my videos go live. Without further ado, I'm going to check out his most popular video, Let Me Down Slowly, break down the song's lyrics with relation to the video, and give my general thoughts. This night is cold in the kingdom. I can feel you fade away. Don't cut me down, throw me out, leave me in a waste. I once was a man with dignity and grace. If you wanna go, then I'll be so lonely. If you leave me, baby, let me down slowly. Let me down, down, let me down, down. If you leave me, baby, let me down slowly. Oh, okay. That's a gun. So I'm looking for an open door. Don't cut me down, throw me out. Okay. He wants an in. He wants another chance. The tone of his voice is very youthful, but also very emotional, so I see why people connect with it. Is she about to rob this convenience store? Okay. Okay. She was very conspicuous. There wasn't a great, you know, robbery plan. Okay, cool. The lyrics are interesting because they're so lovelorn and a lot of them are sort of wordy and poetic, but the melody writing is pretty straightforward and upbeat. And he's saying, you know, don't don't just dump me, you know, let me process it. I don't know if there's explicitly a breakup going on in the video, but I think what we do know is that this couple is suffering because of financial struggles. I mean, they're living in quite a nice house, but they can't pay the bills. So one partner decides to go out and rob a convenience store. From from watching, you know, action movies and stuff, robbing a bank might have been more effective and lucrative, especially with her lack of attempt to hide her identity. But what's interesting is that might actually serve its own purpose, right? Obviously, she wanted to be caught. This is her wanting an out of the relationship because, you know, it serves the two purposes, right? Like, she no longer has to worry about their financial struggles and she doesn't have to be a passenger on the sinking boat of a love life anymore. I don't know how effective of an idea that was because I do not believe that her partner can legally keep the money. But with the relatively simple story in this music video, we get some pretty strong characterization, which is very cool. So that was fun. Always love a good armed robbery for legal reasons. I mean, fictional armed robberies. The next video I'm going to check out is called The Water Fountain. That's dangerous. She told me that she loved me by the water fountain. She told me that she loved me and she didn't love him. Forgetting what she told me by the water fountain. You couldn't be at home in the nighttime because it made her feel alone. But at that time she was too young. The moment that she told me that she was in love too young. I really like the melody and his voice really sells it too. Okay, so the music video wasn't super instructive as far as theme goes, but I admire how tapped into teen culture this feels like it is because it really does feel like teen pop and not in a in a negative way at all. Later Zoomers have this sort of genre agnosticism best represented by the likes of Billie Eilish where, you know, a lot of the sound of this song, like the way that he was um, recording this beat at the beginning of the video, as well as some of the shots in the video felt really reminiscent of hip hop. And he contextualizes the song in a childlike setting that, you know, a child or teenager can immediately relate to. Like conversations by the water fountain, we might have a water cooler if you're an adult working in an office, but otherwise, if you're by a water fountain, you're a kid, right? You're a teenager in high school or middle school. But he very explicitly says that was like an innocent promise and now things are different. She's got something else in her cup. She's probably drinking at a party, right? The love was a product of this, you know, 
innocent idealism, whereas now the reality is things are a bit more complicated. He's using the water fountain as the metaphor for this idealistic love. He's saying it's all smashed and rusted and whatever. The love itself is broken, but it can be fixed. But where I think it crosses over and appeals both to an older audience and a younger audience is in this retrospective voice. The most direct analogy that I can give is Taylor Swift's music, especially some of her early to mid career music where she was talking a lot from the point of view of someone who was crossing the border from teenager to real, you know, working adult and still had the fresh memory of being a kid and what that felt like while understanding, you know, what life really was like outside of high school and having that perspective that she could use to be instructive to her younger fans. This song does the same thing because it takes this idea of young innocent love, sets it in a high school, and then pulls away and says, things get more complicated when you get older, but broken love and broken trust may also be fixed. The last song I'm going to check out is Boy in the Bubble. I was walking home, stepped to the gate, and I'm all alone. I had chicken on the plate, but the food was cold. Then I covered up my face so that no one knows. Then my mom walked into the living room. She said, boy, you gotta tell me what they did to you. I said, you don't want to know the things I had to do. She said, son, you gotta tell me why you're black and blue. I told this kid I'm ready for a fight. Punch my face. I know you want the satisfaction. It's not gonna happen. Oh, okay. Well, there's no excuse for the things he did, but there's a lot at home that he's dealing with because his dad's been drunk since he was a kid. Every time you curse my name. Okay, so now we have them both running together. Hmm, okay. So he's putting on the helmet and now the bully. Okay, yeah, pretty clear reversal there. Okay, so this song is sort of similar and different to The Water Fountain because it's from the perspective of a kid, but without the overt sense of a retrospective voice imposing itself on this story. So instead of using his adult voice to tell us how he now feels in retrospect about this, you know, childhood bullying scenario, he's using the voice of him as a child to signal us to something deeper. He talks about going home after school, he's letting his food get cold, he's not eating, he's not talking, he's obviously upset and he explains why and it's because he's gotten beaten up. And so the voice of the chorus is basically this immature kid puffing out his chest and saying, yeah, you know, punch me, whatever, I don't care, I'm fine. And like, obviously, no, he goes home and, you know, he's probably on the verge of tears. Like, he's not okay, but what he's telling us is this is what he needed to do to survive this. This is what he was telling himself to process the situation and to get past it. The helmet represented him trying to protect himself from hurt and feeling isolated and put down, and he is saying that the bully felt that way all along. But it also speaks to the sense of alienation, right? He's this little kid lost in, you know, the galaxy of, you know, older kids bullying him. I like the nuance in the perspective of the second verse because he says, you know, there's no justification for the way that he treated me, but there is an explanation. So this is yet another way that he is targeting this music towards a younger audience that needs to learn these lessons, you know, the sort of message of hurt people hurt people, while also speaking to a slightly older audience member like me who already knew this but might use this also in, you know, adult life. I think the chorus also has a similar sort of set of dual purposes because on the surface it's this perspective that is, you know, masochistic and weird and, you know, sort of brings to mind like a grunge or emo kid, you know, like, look at me, I love pain. And like a younger audience member will listen to that and, you know, think that they're so tough and cool and get gratification out of that. But then on the verses, they actually learn the thing that they're supposed to learn. So having not listened to Alec Benjamin's music before, I'm pleasantly surprised, especially by the quality of his voice, which is very nice and very listenable. To my knowledge, he's older than I am, but he sounds young, which is an asset, especially when you are trying to reach a broad audience. And something in particular that I appreciate is how much thought he clearly puts into his lyrics, first of all, in constructing them as narratives, and second, as giving them a sort of didactic function. There's definitely the feeling that he is trying to be a positive role model, spread positive messages, and create something that's equally entertaining and emotionally useful 
to his audience. So I'm really glad that I finally got around to listening to his music for the very first time and that you were here to join me. So like I said, if you want me to listen to any more of Alec Benjamin's music on this channel, or if you have any other artists that you'd like to recommend, please let me know in the comments down below. Check the description for that donation link. Please subscribe to be here when I post new videos every week. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you are staying safe and healthy. And until next time, that's it.